All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fest Football. I'm going to take you through a, a quick video on a weekly practice schedule, kind of uh, the ins and outs of what ours would look like on a Monday through a Thursday. Again, they're not all uh, the same, but as we start to get into the season, we kind of follow uh, the same patterns and do a lot of the same things. They'll change from opponent to opponent, uh, week to week, depending on practice time, weather, things like that. But this is kind of a simple layout of what we like to do uh, during game weeks in season. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline, Replay System we use. All right, I have it at the school that I'm currently coaching at, the schools I was at previously. Uh, if you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay, check out Game Strat Dome Hats, which is the headwear company I use for play fast football and the school that I'm currently at, uh, the last school I was at as well. This is one of our fitted dome hats with our Crusaders on the back, BK on the front. We've got a red one, a white one, a black one. You can customize, build your own hats, do whatever you want uh, on the online hat builder to create your own hat, your own story. So make sure you check out Dome Hats. Baker Sporting Goods provides uh, some of our coaches' shirt, coaches' shorts. Our uniforms are provided by them. Uh, we have player gear that's provided by them. We have a team store that they run for our fans. And so, you know, you can get all of your coaching gear, your team gear, your players gear, your fans gear, everything you need, you can get in one convenient location. So make sure you check out Baker Sports Just Play. Uh, it's the software tool, playbook uh, tool that we use. We use it not only for our playbook, but we use it for a lot of presentations. So um, our head coach uses it on his Monday meetings. Uh, with the team, he does a lot of presentations that are through uh, some stuff in Just Play, and then uh, and then on top of you know your other ways to present, whether it be you know PowerPoint modes or other uh, presentation modes. We use Just Play because we can tag video in there, and we can show drawings and everything we need in our playbook. So if you were going to speak at clinics, it's a great presentation tool to use at clinics because it makes it real easy to plug your. Um, your video clips in there so it's got a real nice setup for presentations and it's also um, an easy way to uh, get your playbook across to your kids you can quiz them on on playbook information game plan information and i think it's the easiest play drawing or play diagramming tool that i've used so make sure you check out chess play difference usa the ultimate striking machine you can get thousands of reps you don't need a partner has set it up in your weight room set it up on a field kids are striking a uh, a dummy with a um, coil leverage spring inside that you can change so as your kids get older stronger uh, they develop more force you can change and make it a tougher tension in the coil or the spring that makes it harder to leverage in when they're younger you can use the easiest tension there but you're getting thousands of reps elbows in thumbs up inside doesn't matter what the weather is per it was perfect during a pandemic because we didn't have to worry about any hands on anything else you get your reps you wipe it down so great tool um, you know, great way to develop the skill of striking in season, off season. So I highly recommend Difference USA and then Coach Tools, which is a uh, player evaluation tool. If you're tired of doing it the old fashioned way, you, you know, writing everything down and then you have to present it either in Microsoft Word or, or type it up for the kids or even give them something handwritten with their grade and how you calculate it. This lets you build your own personal columns, everything that you want in those columns, and you can input the data and it just creates a more professional way to grade your players and then it looks a lot better uh, when it's done in the software the right way rather than you know the old-fashioned way I used to do it which was like chicken scratch and then you're giving it to a kid hey I think it graded out as an 86 here's why this makes it professional once you get the columns done it makes it easy to do and it saves you a lot of time so make sure you check out coach tools so for us on the defensive side here's just a look at what a weekly practice plan may look like so on Monday, we're usually going to get the pre-practice meeting and we're going to get the walkthrough. That means uh, 20 minutes before practice, right after school, I'm going to get the meeting. Anything I need to install, change, look at, any clips I need to look at. Uh, Monday morning, we do corrections uh, before school at 7 o'clock. So Monday morning, we do corrections. So I have a chance to go through 8 or 10 plays and correct them in 15 minutes on Monday morning. So on Monday afternoon, we're talking about formations new formations, how are we going to set the strength, where are we putting the sand, what coverage is we playing. Uh, those are things that we're looking at in the meeting. And then we get a 10-minute walkthrough pre-practice. And now we're going to see formations and say, all right, this week we got to set the SAM here versus this set, three by one. This week we want to play you know, stump or we want to play uh, mix or stubby or we want to play three cloud or three kick, whatever you want to call it. That, that's a chance pre-practice where we get a chance to walk through that. Sometimes in pre-practice, I may be walking through a new pressure path if we have that in. So we get the pre-practice meeting and we get to walk through on Monday. Our typical Monday practice, we're going to have uh, uh, usually 10 minutes. Sometimes earlier in the season, 15 minutes, we're going to have tackling circuits. And we're going to work on 
all different forms of tackles. We'll have a roll circuit going on, a tracking circuit or a vice to ball, uh, two man vice drill going on, and then we're going to have some uh, leverage drills where we're working on, we have the hit and rise shield, so we're working on, on striking on the rise and, and profile tackles. So we're always going to kind of change up what those are, but we start at least in the, in the beginning of the year, it was every day. Now we do at least two days a week, if not three days a week, we do tackling circuits. After tackling circuits, we're going to go to Indy. As we get further in the year, that, that usually becomes a 10 to 15 minute period. Earlier in the year, obviously, it's a you know, 15, 20 minute period when you are working on those things more. Now, especially like this week, getting into playoffs, it's getting dark at 5.30. We're not on the field till 3.10 or 3.15, so you're kind of in a rush to get things in. So your Indy probably gets cut down a little bit to 10 minutes. All right, and then what we do on a Monday is we're going to have a team odd period, a team even period. Because we play uh, tight front, three down, and then we also jump into some four down even stuff, we're going to have a team odd and a team even period. And usually on a Monday, I'm looking at formations that I think are going to give us issues, how we have to set the coverage, where we might be weak in some things, so that if it jumps out on, uh, with the scout team on Monday, if we look at something and go, hey, that's going to give us an issue, and then we run it and the scout team gives us a little bit of an issue, we know the adjustments we've got to make, what we've got to fix. So we'll usually go, you know, 10 minutes team odd, 10 minutes team even, getting our base calls in, out of our odd, out of our even, getting our coverages if, you know, if there may be any differences. And then usually on Monday, it's the formations that I think we're going to struggle with the most. Uh, the formations that people run that we've seen all year long, uh, we kind of put those on a back burner because I feel like we should be able to play those no matter what because we've been playing them for eight or nine months. It's things that are new or wrinkles that we try to work on on Monday. And then we're going to do a blitz on cam period where we're going to have, maybe we have new paths going in or new tracks going in, or maybe we have some choice blitzes going in or some blitz to formation deals going on where we're going to set the formation, make the middle safety, make the call, and, and we're going to make sure that our paths are correct and we're going to make sure that our rotation and coverage is correct. We almost never, unless it was a good on good period earlier in the year, we almost never do live blitzes against the scout group because usually when you do blitzes against a scout group, it's Katie Bardadors, the blitz gets home every time. You really don't see where the issues are until you get sometimes in a game when the other team can actually pick blitzes up and, and do certain things. So a lot of times for us, early in the year, we'll do good on good against our own offense and we'll do um, non-scripted series where the coach, head coach on offense can call it every once, I call it I want, and now you gotta call your blitzes into some things and see if your rotations are right, see if they catch you in something that you don't need to be in that you need to check out of or change the rotation of the blitz. But once we get into the season, we almost never do 11 on 11 live blitzes versus scout team. To me, in 25 years of doing this, it just becomes a waste of time. You're almost always gonna get home. You don't get any value out of it. So we blitz on barrels or on cans way more than we ever would blitz uh, live against the scout crew. Tuesday, we're going to do tackling again. We're going to do Indy again. There's going to be a skeleton period on Tuesday. Sometimes we just do skeleton against our own offense because we have some really good passing schemes that stress us out on the back end, and I feel like if we can defend those, uh, we can defend anything. But if there's a team that throws the ball really well and has certain personnel groupings or, or concepts or formations that we need to work on, then we'll obviously work on their best 8-10 plays that they run or passes that they run. Um, but a lot of times for us in Skeleton, we just go good on good, us against us, because we throw the ball a bunch with some really neat passing concepts. So I feel like if we can handle that, we should be able to handle most of the things we see on a Friday night. And then we'll focus only on odd versus top runs and passes. So I might, depending on what the percentages are, I might have five runs, three passes. Some weeks we play teams at six runs, two passes, but we're gonna take their three best runs, their two or three best passes, and we're gonna work our odd stuff against that, mix in some of our stunts and our movements and, and some different coverage adjustments uh, in that script right there. And then, and then uh, that ends our Tuesday pretty much most of the time. Wednesday, we'll do a turnover circuit instead of a tackling circuit. We don't do it all the time. Sometimes we stay with tackling. Sometimes if we need to steal time, we won't do either one if we feel like we're behind on something or maybe weather was an issue. All right, but we'll usually start some type of turnover circuit cover some third down scenarios, cover some short yardage scenarios, our calls that week, what we like that week, what we're doing on third down, what we're doing in short yardage. Maybe if we have a third down personnel group, we'll work that personnel group and then we'll also mix in some base calls from our base defensive group and, and you know, uh, down a distance, third and three or less or four or less and we don't feel like we need the third down group on the field. So we'll work those scenarios, then we'll work some short yardage and we'll work some short yardage calls 
on different parts of the field where maybe their short yardage calls uh, with the other team backed up or closer to midfield and we don't want to be too aggressive with what we're doing because we don't want to give up a home run and then we'll work those short yardage calls when it's you know time to make a play inside the red zone and you know uh, inside the, the 10 yard line five yard line uh, and then also maybe situationally in a game where you know you're at the 50 you absolutely need to stop and you have to make this type of call that's either pressure or, or you know one of those band calls where if we're home we're home we make a play if not and it gets out it's probably going to go for 50 so talking about the different short yardage scenarios when we like certain calls making sure our kids know the short yardage calls that we're going to use that week things things of that nature on um on a wednesday and then we'll do our team even versus best runs and passes so we have enough even stuff that we carry uh, from week to week. We still play a lot of our even stuff from three high. So a lot of times it's me trying to fix some things behind our even front with our three high to get us uh, in the right situations versus certain personnel groupings. And, and maybe it's the, some line stunts that we got to use to get the ball where we want it. Uh, or maybe some line stunts we got to use to take some things away uh, from the other team. But it's usually going to be some type of team even versus best runs and passes. And then on Thursday, we'll do formation rec, uh, where we'll ju we're just working on cans and formations are coming out and we're making sure we got the, the, the Sam set to the right side and we're making sure that each side's making a coverage call. All right, what are you playing over there? Is that good? Yes. Why? What else could you play? What are you playing over there? So we'll do that. And then we'll also have another blitz on cans period where we're setting up formations. If we had choice blitzes, we'll do it a lot of times in, a, in like a ping pong setting where there's cans set up 20 yards away from each other on each side of the field. You're facing that way, you've got a formation that comes out. I give you maybe a choice blitz where you can go, we've got two, two blitzes packaged together. This formation and grouping or this personnel grouping, I want this blitz. This formation or personnel, I want this blitz. They look at that side right there. They see the formation, middle safety makes the call. Boom, down set hut. Let me see the path, make sure it's right. Let me see the rotation. If it's a zone blitz, let me see you lined up where you need to be if it's any type of man pressure. Then I make them turn around and go 20 yards the other way, and now facing the other way, there's cans down with another coach with formations that they're already lined up in, and now we got to go over there and make a rip or a Liz call, and then we got to make one of our blitz calls based on a formation. So we'll do that uh, on a Thursday, and and it'll be you know tempoed where we're kind of trying to move back and forth a little bit, and then usually for me, I like to run maybe four plays base their base stuff, what they do, maybe three runs and a pass or two runs, two passes. Uh, just to make sure we're seeing it, keep it fresh in our mind for Friday night. If there's any checks or, or, or if there's splits or backfield sets or things that we're really keying in on, we'll make sure we line up that way and see if our kids can point it out and say, hey, back's real flat, back's real deep. Uh, look at this guard, set back, we think we're going to get pull. Uh, just little things like that on a, on a Thursday. And then usually like two third down scenarios and try and carry two of our third down packages so that we're also getting kids on and off the field making sure their head's in the game on a Thursday, making sure they're thinking. A lot of times in there, what my head coach will do, and I really like this idea, is in the middle of that, in the middle of that uh, period right there, he'll call out, hey, safe punt, they're punting, but we need to leave the defense on the field, what are we doing this week? And now we gotta make sure that if we're gonna bring a returner in, but we're gonna play some type of safe look, we've gotta have the right people on and off. Sometimes it changes from personnel group to you know from our even and our odd and then our third down package we've got to know how many are coming on and how many are coming off if we're just running safe i'm not talking about running the punt team on there's scenarios each week where the coach will come in on game plans on sunday on sunday meetings and he'll say hey look if it's they don't change personnel their quarterback is the punter if it's fourth and three or less and and we don't know if any other personnel is coming on we're leaving the defense on the field. Let's make sure we talk about it this week. So that's always a chance where we get uh, the ability to work on that scenario, make sure we got the right kids on and off. Sometimes we'll take our middle safety, who's also a punt returner, and we'll say, hey, look, here's the defensive call. Play it unless that kid lines up in a punt formation, you know, 13 yards from the center. Now you can back up and be ready to field a punt. So all those little scenarios that you're talking about, usually two of our short yardage calls, maybe one man call and then one type of red zone uh, zone combination that we may be using and then we'll always at some point talk about a Hail Mary walkthrough we bring in different people to rush the passer usually each week we might have a certain game on uh, if it's a Hail Mary situation we might change the path of the game with the front four uh, you know if we're 
if there's any bunch settings we're trying to see, we may press a bunch and do some different things. So just to get the kids comfortable, hey, Hail Mary group, it's a different group for us. We put four of our taller guys on the back end and then three guys that can run on the second level and then four guys that can rush the passer down. So uh, we always try and look at Hail Mary situations on Thursday walkthroughs. And we, ha we actually have had to use them two or three times this year, so it's come in handy. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that you do in your practice and you may never use it, but if you ever have to use it. Now, we never, early in the year we will a little bit, but as we do this on a Thursday, we don't line up and throw the ball down there and make them play the ball because we don't want to get anybody hurt. We bring them out on the field. We set the ball down at the 40 and say, all right, where would you line up? All right, the 50, other 40, where would you line up? Make sure everybody's good. And then we just talk about, all right, remember, all right, if this is a setting where we don't need a pick, if you can, you've got to throw the ball straight into the ground. If you do get your hands on it, go down. We don't need a fumble. We don't need anything else. So if you do pick it, we don't need to return it. This is Hail Mary. We're in this uh, personnel grouping to defend things because we have the lead. All right, so if you do knock a pass down, we talked to them. We can't bat a pass up. We actually lost a, uh, a game on the last play of the game with about six seconds left. Not a Hail Mary situation, but a situation where – uh, a ball was thrown and the defender went to pick it and he batted it straight into the air and behind him was another player that caught it and we ended up losing 32-31 uh, on the last play of the game. So in that Hail Mary situation, we're always talking to them about, hey, if you go up and get two hands on it, if you pick it off, you better get down on the ground all right, and not try to return it. Or if you're going to bat it down, you better make sure you throw it straight to your feet and we're not batting it, volleyball setting it anywhere else because we've all seen those plays where the ball gets batted to an offensive player that runs in. So um, generally speaking for us, that's about what we do. Weekly practices, like I said, game plans may uh, change a little bit here or there if we're seeing different things. And if there's a week where the team is 95% run, they don't throw the ball other than you know a couple play action shots or waggles or something else, well then maybe the skeleton goes out and we do something else. If it's a team that's going to throw the ball 40 times a game, maybe we have two skeletons mixed in there. So we have the ability, you know, it's, it's a living document. It changes all the time. When weather gets bad, we can change it to say, all right, this day we're going to have to go heavier because I don't think we're going to get outside tomorrow. We have some weeks where we play on Thursdays and we got to make adjustments. By weeks, obviously, you're going to make adjustments. But this is kind of just a simple look at a weekly practice plan for us on the defensive side of the ball in season, what we do, how we get through the week, how we're looking at what they do, um, you know, how we're lining up the formations, when we do formation rec, when we do blitz on cans, things like that. So just to give you an idea of kind of what we do, obviously your practice plan should always be conducive to you, your school, your staff, your players. There is no one practice plan that everybody uses. There is no one template that says, hey, use this practice plan and win championships. you got to do a job. You have to be effective in your job, and only you knows what you need at your school with your coaching staff, the availability of coaches, where you have meetings, what the availability of meeting rooms and where you can meet and watch film, and your players. You know, there, I, I was at a, a couple schools where every once in a while we wouldn't have meetings and watch film pre-practice a lot of the times because they, you know, we had a hard time focusing. They were a better group to go out on a field and walk through things hands-on rather than sit in a classroom and watch film. So there's no set plan. There's nothing set in stone that says do this to win games. You have to understand it's your program, your coordinator, head coach, whatever it is. You need a practice plan that's going to get things done. So pick the one that's best for you and don't be afraid to make changes. As always, I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Make sure you turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video. Leave a comment if you like or don't like the content or how I present it because it always helps me. Any comments that you leave, I will try to get back to you. Uh, I just had one today with a guy giving me an idea about doing some shorter videos, so he might not like this one if it's 20-something minutes long, but he brought up a great point, so I'm going to think about that in the future, um, doing some shorter videos that are less than 10 minutes long. And uh, also, thumbs up, thumbs down lets me know if you like the content or not, which lets me figure out what types of videos we need to do. So I appreciate everything you do for Play Fast. So you guys are in the playoffs. If you are, good luck this week. If your season's over, get ready for the offseason. I'm trying to kick up the uh, Play Fast Football Clinic again in 2023. Won't be in January this year. It might be closer to March or April, but definitely trying to get it going. It might even become a summer deal. So it's in the works right now, trying to figure a few things out. A lot of people have been asking about it, so definitely want to get it off the ground again. So thank you for everything you do for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.